Earlier, we brought you the start of the Harry Kane press conference and our very own England correspondent, Faker Others, asked Harry this. There have been a couple of reports around that you, you called a player summit on Friday morning after the game. Can you confirm if that's the case and, and what was the purpose of it? No, that didn't happen. So uh, I'm not sure where that's come from. I think, uh, again, probably just you know, people trying to maybe create something out of nothing really. The day after the game was um, yeah, just a small debrief that we always do from the manager. And then uh, it was just a family day. We had, we had seven hours with the family, which I'm not sure all the lads were, were quite happy about after a few hours. It was, uh, <laughs> it, it was, it was pretty hectic, to be fair. So uh, we might cut that down in the, in the future. But no, that's what it was. And I think it was an important day just to kind of switch the minds off. You know, we'd, we've done well in the tournament so far, four points after two games. But... Uh, yeah, in, in this sort of environment, you need a chance just to switch off, and, and that's what that day was for. England captain there and striker Harry Kane. <laughs> brutal, <laughs> brutal from Kane, wasn't it? Yeah. Seven hours was too long with the family. Yeah. <laughs> Get him off. But you know, you know what? He, <laughs> Harry is the kind of person that goes into sort of focus mode, 100%. and maybe he didn't want the focus to be disrupted. And, and that look, much. with the the answer that he gave there to Faye about the the players um, meeting, that it could have happened. And they may have all agreed that we don't want this to get out. Anyone's asked a question, nope, it didn't happen. It may, it may have done. The small debrief from the manager afterwards, the manager may have left and they may have sat around for five minutes just to have a chat. And that that's good, that's refreshing. And if that did happen, brilliant. If it didn't, that someone is trying to damage the team in a, a little bit to a certain degree by putting these, these rumours out there. Yeah. Well, the only way they can change it all is, of course, in that next game and give us the performance and they owe us the performance I feel yeah, yes yes look it's it's so difficult yes and no look you, you could perform terribly and still win 1-0 against Slovenia still win 2-0 you could perform unbelievably and win 10-0 and everyone goes oh my god we're going to win the Euro, win the Euros it, it, it's just about and as he said and as a and as a supporter, I'm fully behind what you've just said in terms of, yes, we need to, we deserve a performance and the players we have, we need to go out and show that we're, we're ready like Germany, like Spain, like Portugal. But as a, a, a player, if I look at my player mode, it's just about winning. It's just about going through the group. And but we didn't win the last game. We didn't. And I agree. And that's disappointing. It wasn't a good performance and we drew. We could do exactly the same and draw and still win the group. And then you go into the knockout stages and that's that's your, that's the time you need to start performing, the knockout stages. This one here is essentially like Harry Kane said, you're just feeling your opponent like a boxing match. And yeah, it's been disappointing. We know that it's been flat. It's been everyone looks tired and everyone's missing their, their home and family by all accounts. And But it's the knockout stage is where it really starts to get important. Absolutely. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. Let's head over quickly to Jay, the Chelsea fan. Uh, good afternoon, Jay. Yeah. Good afternoon, boys. How's it all going? Um, first and foremost, just a quick one. Um, I, I think we just need to relax, boys. I think. Come on, you know, stop panicking. Um, I think they got four points out of two games. It's not ideal. I, I think. I just think it's the performances, not, Jay, isn't it? It's, it's that lack of performance that we've seen from from England, and it feels like, especially after that. Italian game where you know after three minutes we're on cloud nine and we just didn't capitalise yeah. on it it just feels like we've been here before maybe I think the issue is as soon as they get a goal they sit back and, and I think it's very strange with Southgate his approach at the minute with using Trent in their defensive midfield because that's what it is it's defensive mid midfield position he hasn't got the runners up the right hand side for me he needs to use Gordon left wing keep Harry Kane up top Get Saka up there as well. Use Foden in his number number ten position, like he does play for Man City. Kind of unleash the beast a little bit there, if I'm honest, boys. Mm. Get, I, I get agree. Get Bellingham playing in that eight, that number eight role. He's done it for Real Madrid. Like I, I just, I, I I don't get it. I don't get why Southgate's been in the job for seven to eight years. He still doesn't understand his best eleven, and we haven't got a system that works. Yeah, I don't I think don't uh, I don't think he helps himself, Jay. To be honest, does he? In terms of uh, his, his post-match interview, when he said he, they haven't replaced Calvin Phillips, let, let, me, let me ask you a question quickly. I mean, that's then. a very strange comment to make, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, the geezer's the geese hasn't started at all in the World Cup. I mean, what did he do? Play forty minutes in two games. I know. And Southgate's turning around and saying that, oh, well, we've spent seven to eight years, we haven't got Calvin Phillips to, or we haven't got a Calvin Phillips replacement. 
You've got Jude Bellingham. You've got a geezer that plays for Real Madrid, <laughs> the player for L- La Liga. Well, let's be honest, Jay. You've got Conor Gallagher, you've got Kobe Mainu, you've got Adam Wharton, all centre midfielders, all playing well for their, their club level. Um... Yet he plays a right back at centre midfield, so I don't understand what what he's trying to say in terms of we've not replaced Calvin Phillips. You're not even tried to. I, I know it's, it's we, we seem to we have the answers, but Gareth Southgate. Well. So let me ask you a quick question. I know we've got to go to a break, but do you think France have played particularly well? No, well, some of their, their some of their plays been good, but their finishing was woeful. But do you the think France have a, a a chance of winning the tournament? Yeah, exactly. I don't think they've been particularly good. A, a one nil win against Austria and then nil nil against the Netherlands, which essentially they should have lost that if it weren't for the English yeah. officials. <laughs> They've not done particularly well yet. They're still favourites, in my opinion. Yeah, true. Uh, the general consensus seems to be that England have a lot to do to win the Euros this summer. But who has impressed you the most? That's what we're going to be discussing next. This is Euro Game Day here on Talksport. On AM, on DAB, via the Talksport app, and on your smart speaker. Talksport.